And what I've learned in Silicon Valley is you always have to think of the next step. Even if you have found a better way, you must wake up the next day better than or try to be better than you were the day before. So going up to going back to Cameroon, I have already changed my mentality. Every day I hit the ground running. What can I do today? Not only to better the world that already exists, but to be better than what was yesterday, to make it something, you know, a lot better tomorrow. And so today we've assembled a stellar group of incredible ambassadors of our dear continent. These are young women professionals that represent the best of us, that represent the hope for tomorrow. They are the ones that are carrying the torch into the future for what we know is definitely the African technological and technology renaissance. And women actually lead that charge and they're here to share with us. And in the spirit of the Silicon Valley Film Festival, it's all about the first boys experience. You will have the opportunity now to hear from those that are really on the front lines. The Institute of International Education is one of the world's largest and oldest nonprofit organizations that work on international education and exchange programs. We were established almost 100 years ago in 1919 at the end of World War I with the idea that our founders believed that we would make the world a more peaceful place if we could know each other on an individual basis and we use education and cultural exchange as the core tool for doing that. So we have offices around the world. Our headquarters is in New York and we run a lot of scholarship and fellowship programs. We protect scholars in threatened situations and we also place a great emphasis on leadership development. And in our office here in San Francisco, we also house the Center for Women's Leadership Initiatives. And we run a lot of the programs that IAE runs, including the Fulbright program on behalf of the State Department and other scholarship programs. But through our Center for Women's Leadership Initiatives, we work around the world and here in, um, here in the Bay Area on education and exchange programs for women specifically. And a lot of those programs have a strong element of technology. And we work in partnership with many of the leading companies here in the Bay Area and throughout Silicon Valley. Um, we work a lot with the State Department and with private sector partners and foundations. And all of our programs bring technology, leadership, exchange, education opportunities to women because we strongly believe that women have to be at the table and strong participants in solving the world's problems. The African Diaspora Network is delighted to have partnered with uh, IIE and the School of Journalism at San Jose State University to bring about the story of the Africa Tech women or emerging leaders. These are women who have overcome so many different challenges to be able to achieve the kind of educational attainment that one can only wish to achieve. And these are women who are scientists, engineers, um, IT experts, and mathematicians. And you will see their story in the documentary. We documented this because we wanted to be able to tell the story of Africa through this woman, but also to really showcase the work of women in Africa. These are um, young women with uh, so many aspirations and dreams for themselves, but they came here through IIE to do internship and cultural exchange and some work at uh, tech companies in Silicon Valley. And we're very grateful for that opportunity for them, but we would like to continue this kind of collaboration and partnership because knowledge and resources must be shared back and forth. Uh, Africa has a lot to offer to the world, and I think this woman came to show that. And in so many ways, the African Diaspora Network is uh, all about that. We wanted to tell the story of Africa through Africans, but we really want to tell the positive story of Africa, uh, not necessarily the Africa that takes aid, but also the Africa that actually needs to be invested in. So these are women to be invested on, in, and we hope that the tech companies and the friends of the diaspora 
uh, Friends of Africa be able to invest in these women, look at what they do and continue to support them. On a bigger level though, um, I think these women do tell the story of Africa and where the trajectory for Africa, women and men, uh, many of them are making an amazing stride. Uh, Africa has a growing economy uh, and these women would have a huge uh, part in that uh, development. Locally here in Silicon Valley, what we want to do is we want to continue the conversation so that people don't just see them once, but they continue to be engaged with these women for years to come. Tech Women is an initiative of the U.S. Department of State's Bureau of Educational and Cultural Affairs. Tech Women supports and encourages women in science, technology, engineering, and math and connects them to their counterparts in Silicon Valley. 2013 was the third year of the Tech Women program. It was the year that Tech Women expanded to Sub-Saharan Africa, to seven new countries. In previous years, the Tech Women program was in the Middle East and North Africa. It was started by Secretary Clinton in 2011 to support women and girls in science, technology, engineering, and math. My name is Nomso Kana, short for, my name is short for Ikwezi Lomso, which is the, the light you see when the sun goes up, when it goes down again, the sunset in the twilight, people would say. Um, I'm from South Africa, born in a village called Malane, and my, I'm from the Kosa tribe, Kosa clan. I would say we are the, 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 the clan that clicks the most because we are quite related to the Khoisans, the, the first people who stayed in the South African land. And um, I work as a nuclear scientist. I'm a registered medical scientist and I have been a science freak all my life. I think when my parents introduced me to education, they've always seen that I'm one individual, kind of weird person who always wants to study the strange things. When I applied, I couldn't get a mentor as everyone got them immediately after their applications and after they were accepted into the program. So when I applied, I, I, I stayed some time asking them, am I matched yet with someone? So there's a lady that came from Ericsson, her name is Charlotte Janssen, she's Swedish she works as a project manager for new product introduction so she said no let me take care even though in, in in ericsson we deal a lot with telecommunications but there is a program that they do called technology for good that's where they go to undeveloped countries in in africa mostly and and, and bring and fuse together science and education and bring and make a science the most desirable thing ever in education, of course. So how does it all link? One of the things that I want to do while I'm doing this project for schools is that I also want to hire out um, undergraduates who are not employed yet to be now the, the system engineers who look after this model that we want to create in our schools. and. I have to come up with a business plan and that is Greek to me. I have no idea how to start that. So it's one of my learning goals that I've been placed at Ericsson and the lady has vowed to help me come up with that a business plan so that I can, I can start opening a, some sort of an NGO that will assist schools in doing this. My name is uh, Bishu for Janet. I am 37 years old, electrical engineer, and uh, I teach. I teach uh, secondary high school students, and I also take part-time courses at the University John Paul II in Yaoundé, private university, and uh, I run my own school. Where I teach full-time is uh, a government school with about a total population of 2,000 students. And I teach electronics and electrotechnics to secondary high school students. And then my own school as a business I run is a private primary school 
with uh, K to 12, American equivalent K to 12, and has 400 students, pupils and students, and um, it started producing results too. Some of the challenges we have in Cameroon are resources. We have a big challenge where the educational system is structured in a way that people all go to school, they do more theory and very little practice. So the way forward is very limited. We come out of school filled with a lot of knowledge, but practically we are not there. We can't really afford to do things by ourselves. So people are not creative, they are not innovative, they don't know how to go and they get frustrated. So it can be really very annoying to the youth and a little like it's blocked, we are stuck. You go to school, you don't have enough orientation, you don't have self-confidence because going to school and training for one thing is fine. Being, having the ability to do those things is another thing. Coming here to America, I even have been more inspired. I've been, I've, I've been more aware of how much technology can improve your life, can change. How much, I mean, I've become aware of the trends that in a little while, there is no way, the way to go is technology. There is no way we can advance our lives without pulling technology along with us. The project I'm working on with Symantec is to bring technology into a classroom. And Symantec is helping me to be able to figure out software that we could use to attain this objective. Now, this far, we've been able to have an insight of what already exists because it's no use going to create something that exists it wouldn't help advance us anywhere so we've already targeted existing software like the Khan Academy that can be used online we've already targeted the Khan Academy light that can be used in situations where we don't have internet connectivity to be able to put them on low powered computers like the Raspberry Pi in case we have to work in communities where they don't have electricity and then on normal basis in communities where they have access to internet or electricity we can use the normal Khan Academy to give resources to teachers first because resource is a problem teachers first and then students having access to these resources just like a library and then targeted other courses like the Coursera, other websites like the Coursera that exist to train staff, teachers. Because it begins with the teachers. A teacher who doesn't know wouldn't teach. A teacher with limited resources is always frustrated and, and it goes down the line. He oozes out the frustration, he spreads it out to the, to the students. And then we have a whole generation of frustrated people on the streets. I'm passionate about telling authentic African stories. There are so many things happening on the continent, so many incredible stories, but we really don't have a platform to put those stories out there and share with one another and share with the world pretty much. And that's why I started, you know, Motley Media. Um, thus far, it's grown incredibly. We, we started with a sports website and that website has given a voice to people that didn't even realize that they were writers in the, in the traditional sense. Um, we've got about 20 contributors who send in stories every now and again. Um, we've got um, you know, thousands, we've got about 30,000 views. And really it's growing and showing that you know, we have real stories to, to share, we have real analysis, we have real input into things that are happening all around the world and at home as well. The team at Blog Her has been an exceptional experience. It's been remarkable. The amount of stuff I've been able to learn is really amazing. And the fact that it's a network for women by women is even more amazing. Um, their business is run very, very leanly. It's very efficient. But in all of this, they've, they've still been able to pay out $35 million last year to women bloggers. This is giving women that never, you know, women, women like a new revenue stream that they could do things by themselves. So I think even the technology that is used is very good. 
technology that is used is very sophisticated and it's something that we can definitely look to implement back home. Um, the business model itself, you know, creating that community is probably like the biggest thing that I've learned whilst I was there, getting these people on board and really looking out for them so that, you know, people that never thought they could be bloggers as a lifestyle, that's what they're doing. They enjoy it. I enjoy reading their blogs and people are willing to pay for that. And it's just, you know, get that value and bring it back and make sure that everybody that is in that value chain feels appreciated in that value chain. So definitely, I think that sense of community, that sense of bringing people together and getting them to do what they love and finding a way to create value from that type of product to uh, an advertiser or to a brand is definitely something important that I've learned. I am here at Santa Clara Valley Water District where um, I, I, I have come to acquire skills in water quality management. So my time here includes touring the three water plant, um, water treatment plants, and also getting to know how they get to run their business. That means the regulations and the, the engagement of the various stakeholders in um, water quality management. Um, the Tech Women experience for me has provided me a platform where I'm able to get acquainted with um, the newest technologies in the treatment of water, in water testing, and um, I have a professional mentor, her name is Angela Chang, and she's there to guide me and I get to like uh, shadow her and sit in, in the meetings that she conducts so that also I can learn the management aspect. Uh, this experience for me is uh, an eye-opener and is opening doors for me and I see myself becoming a leader especially like um, these days water is referred to as the blue gold and I believe it's one of the um, substances that is um, going to be very critical and uh, important so for me um, I see myself rising to become a leader in the policy making um, and also um, in the encouragement of um, uh, girls and young women to pursue science, technology and engineering and math because um, the application of science, especially with something that is so critical like water, for me it uh, shows like um, the innovative um, solutions that come for, uh, to solve um, community problems and I think that way uh, young girls can emulate and also want to pursue careers in STEM. I am from the beautiful city of Cape Town in South Africa. I am an SAP business intelligence consultant and SAP mentor and most of the time I have to explain what that means. SAP stands for Systems, Applications and Processes and it's really a system that helps to automate business processes for organizations. What does it mean to be a business intelligence consultant? Well, that essentially means I help organizations find value and meaning in their data. I'm also excited about data visualization and being able to tell a story with the data. I was introduced to technology by my brother who was studying at a university um, in Port Elizabeth and he was studying towards information technology. So he always used to come back home with these awesome programs that he had written. And that is really where my interest uh, in technology started. My mother was also a science um, teacher. So I think the inclination towards maths and science, uh, that is where it started. And, um, and so where I went to varsity was actually quite interesting because I applied for what I thought was a bursary, which turned out to be a scholarship, which ended up being at a university of technology, Petronas, in Malaysia. So I spent four and a half years of my life in, in Malaysia, which was really an interesting journey. And that is where I majored in information systems. And that is really where my journey with technology began. I came across the Tech Women opportunity in 2011. And I wrote to them because I found that South Africa wasn't on the listing of the countries. So they wrote back to me and said, look, South Africa is not opened right now, but next year we, we're looking at it. So 
we will send you more information. So rightfully so, a year later, in December last year, they sent me an email saying South Africa is now one of the countries and if you want to apply, you can. So I applied, um, I, took, I took a risk and I applied and I had to write, I remember, about six essays, you know, on why I should be selected, what is my community involvement and how will I use the lessons that I've learned here you know, when I go back to, to Cape Town. So, so it was really, you know, quite a gruesome application process. Um, and after that, there was a short listing and an interview um, at the embassy in Cape Town, which was quite an interesting one because it was via video conference. And it's so difficult to, to gauge, you know, how someone is feeling about what you're saying if, you know, if you, if the, if you don't have them in the room with you. Um, but through all of that, I remember at the end of May, I got an acceptance letter very late in the evening um, in my inbox, and, and here I am. And how did I end up at Autodesk? So part of the program is that you get assigned a professional mentor and a cultural mentor. And the matching is based on you know, the goals that you set for yourself, your area of interest, um, and the type of project that you want to work on when you're here. So Tanya, uh, who is here at Autodesk is my professional mentor and it's funny because when we chat to each other we're so much alike. It's so nice to be able to you know reach across halfway across the world and find somebody who's so similar um, you know. Isn't in, it scary? <laughs> yeah actually and it, it just makes me realize you know the 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 the, the challenges that women in STEM fields face. Sure. Um, it's the same, you know, all over the world. Um, just the fact that we can speak this common business intelligence language, we you know? Get, we get the picture, we get the vision, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and that, then the fact that we share um, that we know how important it is to engage with the users and to have those conversations yeah. about you know, what, what are you finding challenging? Let's talk about what's actually working. Let's talk about what most people don't want to talk about. Right. What are the issues around yeah. data security, around, you know, data quality. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. so just sharing that vision with you and, and having somebody who gets it. Yeah, you know? it's fun. It's, <laughs> it's fun. It's, it's, it's exciting. They need to understand that internet, IT, phones, communications and all that are not only for leisure. They need to use them as tools that can help them to improve in everything they do when they are students in their studies, when they are professionals in what they do to be more competent, to learn more and all that. And one of the things I want to do, one of the projects I want to achieve is to provide innovative IT tools to help them to appropriate the technology and to use it in their daily life to be better in what they do. And above that, I believe also that in our countries and in Cameroon in particular, we need a change of mindset about young feeling accountable for what their country is going through they need to understand that they have to be the change they want to see. Here I am affiliated to Santa Clara University where I'm working on the Bill and Melinda Gates project, the cooking banana uh, project in Nigeria where uh, I'm supposed to contact um, stakeholders in the plantain value chain in Nigeria and at the end come up with strong recommendations that I can provide to the Bill and Melinda Gates who wants to intervene in the plantain value chain in Nigeria. Yeah, my job back in Cameroon involves uh, research work in agroforestry. And like any research institution, the end product of research is to impact a certain group of people. Um, in agroforestry, we, uh, the beneficiary group of our research includes smallholder farmers, amongst others. 
So um, currently I'm working on market information systems. Um, how do I connect farmers who are in rural areas, often disconnected from markets in the cities, uh, by bad roads, poor mobile communication, and other factors um, who take what the prices the traders who come to. They, all they have is the prices uh, the traders tell them, traders who come to buy their products to sell in cities. So they are not sure of what's happening in the city. They are not sure of the prices uh, in the city. So all they take is uh, the word from the traders, which at times may discourage them as these prices may not be good enough for them, which um, also at times the traders may not even come to buy and their products like uh, waste. So what happens is that they may be discouraged from producing more. They don't have good prices. They, don't, they may be discouraged from producing more, yeah. And also, yeah, and also um, I'm looking at ways to better connect these farmers to the market to provide a market information system, basically through mobile phones, since uh, most people, uh, a great number of people have access to mobile phone technologies now. How can I send them text messages? How can I train them to be able to better use this uh, these mobile phones? How can I train them to know when to sell their products? How can I really impact this farmer's life to make them better sell their products, to obtain a higher benefit, to encourage them to produce more and to feed the people living in the cities? My name is Peace Asukwa. I am from Nigeria. I'm heading the IT and Information Management Department of Save the Train International Program in Nigeria. And I'm also the CEO of Peswa Classical Engineering. It's an engineering company. Our aim is to use engineering products and work with the emerging technology to develop technology that will solve both non-profit and profitable solution for businesses. I work with them to develop an apps that will be used for e-payments. And that's one of the things that we would like to, I would like to take back to our country, Nigeria, and also implement it in Africa as a whole. TraceSoft builds software applications to collect and share information about where products come from, how they are made, and the differentiating qualities about those products. Part of the Tech Women program, I have been partnered with NetUp, um, and my mentor at NetUp, Luciana Vecchi, is responsible for their strategy on globalization. What uh, the globalization department does is to ensure that Netta products are um, global, that they can launch in many different languages around the world, and that their products are localized in the countries that um, they go out into. So my project has been around assisting the team in coming up with um, a new way to, to better handle their data and their analytics. Um, one of the things that has been, um, uh, that has made a really huge impact on me is, is um, the, the whole idea around scale. Everything is big around here. So um, while uh, my company, uh, you know, I built it from, you know, a seed funding of 200,000, uh, dollars in, and, and turned that into 1.5 million dollars in five years. I'm working at a six billion dollar uh, Fortune 500 company. So the, the whole element of, of scale has, has been quite humbling. That project took me one and a half years and it was very good because uh, we opened up the internet from, from all over the world to Kenya and to the rest of East Africa. Uh, apart from that, um, I, am, I, I run uh, Women in Technology. This is an, a network organization that provides uh, an, a platform for women to come together and grow their, their skills, their careers and just provide a network of women working in the technology industry in Kenya. I 
work within eight, eight countries in Africa. Those are Rwanda, Burundi, Uganda, Tanzania, Kenya, South Sudan, Republic of Congo, and Democratic Republic of Congo. I do consultancies in all those, those countries. I also have a company in Kigali called Fidelix that does consultancy. Within Promelec, I, I deal with wireless because uh, I'm a WiMAX specialist. And uh, this is a common problem in, in Africa. We have internet, but we don't have the last mile. It's there, but it doesn't, it, it's not in our homes. We need to connect those people. And the affordable and realistic way to do so is using wireless. I studied biochemistry and chemistry undergraduate and I have a master's in intellectual property. I'm a white portrayed intellectual property expert and basically my work is to try and bring uh, science and technology into the mainstream of the economy and I believe that my country and most countries in Africa have potential for their knowledge and innovation to contribute to development and I believe they can make a living out of their knowledge and they can survive economically. So I'm trying to raise the standards and bring scientists and innovators. You know, I, I'm trying to raise their, their uh, standards of living and just make money and business out of their ideas. Because traditionally they just publish and I think there's more to publishing. There's more to their knowledge, the knowledge behind the publication. And so that's what I'm trying to do. I'm also involved in the establishment of a, natural, a center of research excellence. Uh, in natural product research. So my mentorship here is based at uh, Juniper and I have an excellent mentor, Meredith McKenzie, who's, all, who's a patent attorney and she's an engineer. She studied at MIT and she also has a Jewish doctor and really she's just my role model. I want to become a qualified patent attorney and she's just show me, showing me the ropes and I've had such a wonderful experience at Juniper. They've shown me everything. They've been so open. Um, they've given me experience in litigation. They've given me experience in open source licensing, which I didn't think was that important, but is really key in the high tech industry. I've been working on patents. I've been working on trademarks and copyright, and it's been amazing. With my emerging leader, which is Rumbi, uh, she had an interest in intellectual property. She has a master's degree in intellectual property, but was interested in a broad spectrum of the intellectual property areas and how they work practically in a company. So for us, we decided um, that rather than have her work on one area for the entire four weeks that she's at Juniper, that she's actually working in about six different areas. So she's getting exposure into those areas. We're getting her involved in meetings that relate to it or processes showing her how we do it and why we do it. Um, so we explain to her what's going on as well as why we do it. And of course, she can ask questions. Um, and then what she's going to do uh, next week, she'll be presenting on her own business plan for how she's going to turn this information into her consulting business um, and how she's going to expand that. So she's going to uh, t try to turn it into a little bit more practical. So rather than just theoretical advice, some of the practical things that she'll be able to do for her clients. If we have to better the lives of people in Cameroon, we have to use technology. So it's very, very important and it's a key component of our development in Cameroon and Africa as a whole. I'm passionate about telling authentic African stories. There are so many things happening on the continent, so many incredible stories, but we really don't have a platform to put those stories out there and share with one another and share with the world pretty much. And that's why I started, you know, Motley Media. I'm what you would call a data geek. So I love data visualizations and being able to tell a story with the data. And I have been a science freak all my life. Mania la sona, mia la sona, no no willy sini.